All the rails to speed. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Alliance Group podcast. And our guest today is Mr. Frederico Martins, uh, a wonderful friend of Alliance Group. Fred is the CEO of Second Chance Financial and Executive Vice President at Five Rings Financial. And uh, what we're going to be talking about today is his role as the CEO and co-founder of Volunteer Emergency Relief, otherwise known as VER. Fred, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. It's wonderful to have you. So, VER has this fascinating story. We're going on, it's been six years. I can't believe that it's been six years yep. that, 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 that you guys have been doing this amazing work uh, through Volunteer Emergency Relief. So in 2017, um, it's really interesting when we were doing kind of our, our, our meeting before the podcast to hear the details of how VER got started. So bring us back to 2017 uh, and Hurricane Irma and how how this whole thing kind of got got started? Well, nothing was planned, right? So right. <laughs> uh, tends to be the case during hurricanes and things back, like that. Back then, <laughs> I was in the logistic business for 20 years. So we had a warehouse. We used to do pick, pack, and ship for international companies. Sure. And uh, since 2005, South Florida was not hit by a major hurricane. You, you were telling me that. That's really hard to believe, especially yes. lately. So there was a period, uh, if you guys didn't hear that right, of 12 years where Florida had not been hit directly. By a major, yeah. By a Small major hurricane. ones, Cat 1, you know, like, right. but nothing like Irma. Irma was a Cat 5. Right, a huge, so huge. So right. it, it was huge, huge. Uh, it was actually, size-wise, was bigger than the state of Florida. Uh, I, I remember yeah. I, I remember seeing those pictures very clearly, yeah. and it actually took me back to the last time I had seen a hurricane that big, which was when Katrina was bearing down on New Orleans, and it was you know as large as humongous, the, yeah, yep. it's enormous. So it was a very scary time. You are there, uh, and you're thinking there are tw- you know there are people who have lived in Florida for the last twelve years. Who- I, I start to get phone calls from clients saying. What should I do? I've, I, I've never been through a hurricane. Exactly. I've, I've, I've been here for 11, 12 years. What do I do? And then I realized it was thousands and thousands of people that moved to South Florida during that gap of no hurricanes. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do a video on Facebook. So I actually did a live on Facebook that went viral. We had over 1.5 million people watched. Wow. And the subject was, what should I do before, during, and after the hurricane? Right. So I did that video, and Gustavo Cudo, which is the other co-founder, yeah. you know, me, my wife Camille, Marina Cudo, and Gustavo. We know Gustavo and Marina very well. Exactly. They're friends of the podcast. Yep. They have actually been guests before. Big hello to them. Yes, my they're partners. Awesome. So uh, Gustavo saw the video and said, Freddie, that's a pretty good idea, you know, to educate people. And it had nothing to do with my business, had nothing to do with his financial business. And even my marketing guys, like... You, you are people going to be confused. What are you doing talking about hurricane? And say, I got to <laughs> right. do this. I, you know, this so many people. Passion project. It's, right? it, it was bigger than myself. Right. Uh, so he kept doing videos. I kept doing videos. And then he said, Freddie, you have a warehouse logistic company. I know you have truck, vans. Mm-hmm. Say, wow, Gustavo, I'm actually selling the company. So I already, I don't have trucks don't anymore. don't have those trucks anymore. Right. <laughs> so I leave my office. And my office is across the street from my U-Haul uh, parking lot. So I see one truck in the parking lot. I went in and I rented. So I called Gustavo and said, hey, I got the truck. I said, really? Say, yeah, I rented. So let's wait for the hurricane to pass and then we'll see what we can do. Right. So we start promoting that, saying, hey guys, if your house is not affected by the hurricane, mm-hmm. we wanna uh, meet. And a lot of people asking us, how can I help? Right, right. I say, okay, let's do this. Let's, From this viral video that yep. over a million people saw. Right. Let's meet in front of this local church in Boca Raton. Uh-huh. Say, perfect, so what day? Okay, we wait for the car field to get clear, uh-huh. and then we'll meet there, check your house. If you have electricity, you have everything in place, which is one of the things that we tell everybody that's gonna come and work with us. You gotta make sure your family's safe, then you can leave to go help. Right. Uh, so we meet in front of this church, 1 p.m., me and Gustavo on the truck. I pick him up at his house and one o'clock, two o'clock, mm. and a lot of people showed up. Gustavo was a lot, I was the people. A <laughs> lot of people, the, only the two of us. The <laughs> two of you, okay. So, so now I'm, you're looking at each other being like, what are we gonna do? What do we do now? <laughs> what we do, two of us, 
Well, I got some case of water in my house. Well, me too, because we stock up on water. So why don't we just put on the truck? Let's drive around. Let's go south because Broward didn't get hit that bad. Uh -huh. But going towards to, to the shore and going south towards Fort Lauderdale, got a lot of flooding there. So I said, let's just go and see whoever needs help. Maybe we'll help uh, clean up a tree. Right. So we drove. We first. have the truck. We have me and you. Let's go. Let's, let's go, go help some people. Yeah. Come on. And I'm so excited to do this because yeah. I've done that. You know, my first... Uh, Volunteer work was going to the line at World Trade Center. I was in Manhattan when the World Trade Center came down. Oh, wow. And I was, you know, like right on the next day uh, by the water there on the river, I was like three hours on the line trying to become a volunteer. And they say, now we have enough. Wow. So that was actually the first time that I put myself in to become a volunteer here. Oh, my gosh. So, and I've been doing this since, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Hurricane 2004. Say, Gustavo, trust me, there is so much stuff to do out there. Let's mm -hmm. just go. But we stopped at a local church, and they, this place was uh, its official shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a bomb shelf, generator. So I had 300 people sleeping there, people that didn't have power. Right. So went to the church. So we arrived, we asked the pastor. So, hey, pastor, you need any help? Say, come with me. He took us to um, walk in, uh, you know, uh, a little freezer. Oh, uh, yeah. And he opened up. It was completely empty. He said, I have enough food for one more meal. And I don't know how long these people is going to be here. So I look at Gustavo. I told you, let's yeah. do it. So we start doing live videos. Say, hey, we didn't donations. We need this. Mm -hmm. But we say, we, we cannot wait for the donation to show up. So we went to, uh, we drove like about an hour to find a supermarket that had power mm -hmm. and, and food in there. And then we went there with our own money. We just bought a bunch of meat, rice, beans, and we brought to the church. Next day, donations start to arrive. Uh -huh. So people kept watching our video. And then we start to get phone calls from people outside, you know, like uh, have uh, Lionel uh, Tina from, yeah, from, uh, from, 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 from Fiber from Financial, Financial well. you know, like Mike Wilk and people like asking Gustavo, I want to donate money. I had a client in England from my logistic company. John, and he's like, I want to donate money. But I say, Gustavo, I'm not going to have money coming through my account. Right, right. You know, my personal account, I don't want to mess with that. Right. Uh, and he said, yep, me too. I said, I always had this dream. You know, it comes from my mom. We always talked about, let's have a nonprofit organization one day. I say, maybe this is the time. Are you in? And he said, 100%. So we went to a local CPA, and we told him, we have no money. We need a business right now. We need a business right now, <laughs> right. and we need to apply for a 501c3. And he told me, Freddie, it takes a year, you know. But because my company, we had a marketing department, you know, uh, and I asked my team, stop what you're doing there for our clients. Mm -hmm. I need a website, a logo. I need Facebook, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I need an online presence. So we apply we got the company open, which is pretty quick, 48 hours. Sure. And then we applied for 501c3. 15 days later, U.S. government gave us the 501 15 status. 15 days, wow. 15 days, yeah. That's People don't believe, but... <laughs> if you know but anything about, a, about setting up those sorts of entities, it does not take 15 days. It no. takes closer it, to a year. Yes. All right. Yes. That's absolutely incredible. And, yeah. and it, was, it was because of the, the presence that you had built. You looked very official. And plus... Um, you know, this, this hurricane, you you were trying to help with a literally a, a situation that was still unfolding. Yeah, I think it was so genuine from the beginning. Right. Me and Gustavo, we had an agreement since day one that we're not living out of VR. Eventually, we do have a dream to, to make this into more structurized because we've been running five, six years now with volunteers only. Yeah, but we had a, a, an agreement. We mm -hmm. make our money. You are finance guy. I'm a logistic guy. This is going to be a hundred percent, you know, a nonprofit. Right. Maybe some employees, but not us. Right. So I think that you know it was so genuine from the beginning that uh, th that's my belief. Yeah. God had that planned. Yeah. You know everything that we went through the hurricane, we have no explanation. Like how did we arrive on I'm not going to mention the name of the singer because for disclosure, he, he asked us not to, but sure. a really famous Puerto Rican uh -huh. singer that owns like a big jet. We're like flying to Puerto Rico with boxes of food. 
back and forth, you know, Key West. We had like over five people that owns airplane calling us saying, I want to help. Wow. I mean, me and Gustav is like, how? Yeah. We believe it's God. Yeah. That's, that's that, my belief. Dude, that's amazing. You guys have helped n- not only Hurricane Irma, but uh, you've helped uh, in Dorian, uh, in, in, in the Bahamas, oh, correct? Yeah. yeah. We were there 48 hours after rescuing people from small islands, actually taking them on a boat and bringing them to safety, to Marsh Harbor. That's yeah. incredible. So not just with donations. In some cases, you've actually helped oh, yeah. rescue people yep. uh, from, yep. from, from from dangerous situations in, in the wake of these uh, of these hurricanes. Yeah, Dorian was uh, probably one of the worst. You know, it it was a Cat 5, but it sat on top of Abaco it did. for 48 it hours. It sat and churned, uh, and I remember that, that went on. It did not slow down. It, it, it sat as a Cat 5. It left as a Cat 5 48 hours later. Gosh. So like inside of a... Yeah. Blender, washing yeah. machine for yeah. 48 hours. That's incredible. Um, it's unbelievable. And, you know, you, you guys have, have done help um, in, in Haiti. Uh, and I, I believe you already mentioned uh, Puerto Rico, um, COVID. Uh, yep. You, you guys were We've helping had 2,000 people at COVID. Yep. Was a big operation, too. You had Hurricane Ian in Fort Myers, uh, which was just this, this, this past year, correct? Yep. Ian was so far... Our larger, our largest, you know, like longer. We we were there for sixty days, mm-hmm. and uh, again, God showed uh, His power. We end up uh, cooking ten thousand meals, hot meals. Wow! Yeah, fifteen hundred food boxes plus reconstruction. I mean, we we've done so many things, so much donation that went through our operation there. Yes. Yeah. It's incredible to me because you are obviously a very uh, successful and and, and busy uh, in, in your in, in your job, uh, which is obviously a, a financial consultant. Um, Gustavo Coto, same way, very very busy guy, not a lot of spare time, but you guys have the time to help people. Um, what are some of the challenges that you face as far as you know being able to to, to actually step away from your job and to do this 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 passion project? And, and, and help people. I mean, I guess that's kind of one of the perks of working in your field, right, is that you have a team that you can trust, you have established a business, and you and you, you have afforded yourself this lifestyle where you can step away if you need to. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely the, the agency and the, the, the business model that we work it help us a lot, you mm-hmm. know, because we don't need to to report to anyone right. that we're taking time off. Right. But also we need to be responsible that, you know, being – how much does it cost me personally to be two months out of my job? Right, yeah. But that's, again, where on my belief it's it's God working. 2017, until that day, the month that Gustavo and myself took off was the month that Gustavo has his largest production <laughs> as a personal agent so far in the that's industry. Incredible. Yeah. And I'm in Fort Myers working two months. I'm not seeing, cl- seeing clients at all. I get a phone call out of nowhere, God, mm-hmm. and saying, you got this huge case that you're going to be working on it, that you're going to make enough money. You don't need to worry. I got you covered. Oh. I mean, I it's like I, I go out on the field to work and God takes my place yeah. in my company. It, it, it does happen. So, But I need to watch, especially, you know, talking about myself. Mm-hmm. Just to give an example, Fort Myers, I, I told my wife, we cannot get involved on this. Mm-hmm. Even though it's a major hurricane, I'll promise you. And I broke my promise. <laughs> and I told her, I said, but I will go to South Carolina because I live in Charlotte. It's a three hours drive. Sure. So remember, I told you we and don't. You're going leave. the opposite way of. of, of, of oh, we go. Oh, yeah. So, okay. but remember, I told you we have this thing at VR that nobody leaves their house until you get clear. Right. You have to make sure that you, your, your family and your yes. home is, is secure first, and then yes. you can help. It's my home, my neighbor, my mm-hmm. city. Because what what am I going to do down there if my city needs help? Right. 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 But if you remember the track of. Uh, oh yeah. It was all over the place. It was going to hit Man, here. The, and then, no, no, it's sitting way up here. And it's coming through Charlotte, right? Uh-huh, yeah. So I'm sitting there like a lion on the cage. Just Camille is like, she knows me. She watching and say, I promise you, I'm not going to Fort Myers, but I will go to South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So I'm heading to South Carolina. You know, it's a three hours drive from Charlotte to where the hurricane uh, landed. 
flooding, but not much of destruction. So I'm calling local churches. We, t- as of today, six years later, mm-hmm. we have an ecosystem of partners, including churches, you know, even the agencies, FBI and all. So we got calling and people like, we don't need anything, Fort Myers, Fort Myers, Fort Myers. And I say, I'll make one more call. I'm about 30 minutes from, uh, you know, like, uh, I'm like close to 95. One more phone call. If this person tell me that they don't need help, I'm going back home. Right. So I got on the phone and I called and she said, I don't need any help. And then I was under the sign for 95 South Uh and I just got on 95 (laughs) and I was like, oh, what am I? And I kept driving (laughs) and the phone rang was Claudia Ferhabach. Uh She said, Freddie, are you guys getting, yeah. Are Uh you guys getting involved? And I say, Claudia, don't ask me. I haven't called Camille yet, but I'm on 95 going South. Mm -hmm. It was, it was stronger than me. So she say, I knew it. I knew it. I just got a call from a local pastor. They desperately need help. I say, put me in touch with him. Mm-hmm. So he called me, and it was like 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. I was going to, you know, the ways, because, you know, we, we, you couldn't have the, the right route going there, so I had to go through back roads when you get to sure, Florida. of course, yeah. Everything was destroyed. Yep. And I say, Pastor, uh, my ways is saying I'm going to be by your house by midnight. I say, where are you? I say, I'm in Charlotte, heading down 95. So I'll be there and we'll talk. We'll see what we can do. Mm-hmm. Then I hang up and say, now I got to call Camille. <laughs> Camille, you, you she promised was that you were not, not going to go down to Florida. She was not happy. Uh-huh. But a couple of weeks into the operation, she was like. Of course. Yeah, it I was mean, It was God sending you there. I mean, what we were doing down there was blowing our minds. And, you know, make the story short, we had a camp. We had uh, over 200 volunteers went through. Uh, we had a. Uh, RV, Gustavo called me and said, Freddy, you know, I own an RV. Where are you sleeping? I said, I'm asleep on the church floor. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, come on. So I arrived, he sent me the RV. So we get like trucks. I mean, it, the operation just kept growing. So yeah. And you were, awesome. you, you slept in that RV for, for how long? Two months. Two months. And Two I months you're down in Florida. Never done, never went on a trip on RV. You know, <laughs> I, I, I always had like, like the idea, but we, you know how busy we are. Yeah. Like to get on an RV and park, uh-huh. man, two months. And now I became an expert. And oh, I told yeah. Camille, we're going to go on an RV trip now because <laughs> I know everything, how to do the water, the heating. That's amazing. It's pretty man. fun. And his RV is nice. Thank you, Gustavo. <laughs> <laughs> they did you solid there. Uh, better than the, the, the floor of the church for sure. Oh, for sure. So how do you explain this? The way that you've been talking and, and, and telling these stories it's a it's a compulsion almost yes. to help. You actually described it as I was like a lion in a cage pacing back and forth to go help people in a disaster area where there's no running water, there's no electricity. How do you how do you explain what what, what that feeling is and and where it comes from? I a hundred percent sure its purpose. Mm-hmm. My nickname was Freddie the Hurricane. Hmm. Because I'm always so active, I'm you know I'm talkative, uh-huh. you know. I, sure, sure. You know <laughs> I like to to interact with people. So I was little, and I aunt of mine used to call me. He comes, Freddy the Hurricane. You know, in Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and I grew up fascinated about natural disaster, like v- volcanoes and uh, even flooding, yeah. and like snow thing. I mean. I hate what the, 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 the tragedy brings to people, mm-hmm. but I love to see that on nature. Mm-hmm. So I married Camille, and one day we're having this major snowstorm in Pennsylvania. We live on, close to the mountains. Mm-hmm. So I, I get the news that the river is floating and blocks off ice. And I'm like, I got to go. Where are you going? I say, I know a place that sits over the river. I'm just going to go there. Come with me. So we go there. I park the truck, and I'm watching the river just blocks of ice and uh-huh. she's like this guy's not right <laughs> this guy's not right are we are we gonna stay here and I'm like yeah you want me? i'll take you home and i'll come back i don't know i had this passion right yeah so you know i've been through the the, the world trade center i was there right yeah uh i think it was a, a calling yeah uh, because i even the operations that we run when it it's over and I go back and I look at the videos that I record, mm-hmm. you know, the pictures and everything that we do. I'm like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. 
who is you know it's like take me to a different stage mind stage yeah and i'm i'm laser focused you know, like, you're in your element. Yeah, you know, and, 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 it's like what you were you were you were put on earth to do. And I'm on the flow. The ideas that comes to my business when I'm there, you know, I truly believe mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta have a source uh, a sense of urgency mm-hmm. on your company to get things done. Right. If you're always on a country club mode, you know. So I bring that to the business. And and Gustavo was there with me and Marina a couple of days. And I'm just like, guys, we need to do this. Uh-huh. And you talk to Gustavo, he say, Freddie, I got majority of my actions after Hurricane 2017. Because I came from that operation. And I say, if I apply this on my business, right. it's like, you got to take, you got to uh, think in a million of seconds. Sometimes you don't, you don't have time to process. And right. sometimes what is low us, yes, we need preparation. We need all this. But if you don't put into action, right. nothing's right. going to happen. Hurricane, you got to act, act, act. You act, then you think. Right, yeah. Mm. So That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's really fascinating. So VER, um, you know, if, if, if there's a disaster, um, Fred, Fred Martins is going to be there. VER is going to be there. I got a call from a Turkish friend. Uh, you know, uh, last night, he, are you guys going to get involved on the earthquake, you know, that just hit? Yep. And I say, man, I would love to, but it's too far, and I, we, we need to know. You know, that's what it, that I need to manage that feeling so I don't get involved on, on everything. So as of now, we are focusing, if anything hits the U.S., especially Florida, mm-hmm. it takes a huge ecosystem Right. of uh, volunteers and churches, you know, like we did in the Bahamas. We saw how hot it was. Right. It was overseas, different jurisdiction, mm-hmm. different country, different laws. Yep. Now you're on a, no, I mean, it's on their land, right? Right, right. Working in Fort Myers was so easy mm-hmm. because right there we, we could get in touch with a local sheriff you department. Have a network. right. You know, but right after we arrived, we found out that the workforce need food because I mean, they, these people are working. So we, we actually told them we can give you guys 300 meals per day. Mm-hmm. So they were sending us to restrict areas to deliver food that it makes it easier, you know, on right. the U S land. Mm-hmm. So not every, but if it's Florida for sure, we, especially now after this hurricane, we got so much of so many people involved, mm-hmm. you know, we have a mobile home now portable, that we can just hook up our truck. It's a it's a little house, so we don't need to sleep on a right. church floor, especially for the first week after we arrived. Uh-huh. Literally, we sometimes we need to sleep on you know, sure, uh, watching the skies. Yeah, you know. So now we 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 well prepare. You know, we we stocked up for the next season. We always keep money on our bank mm. so we can act. So we'll. Hopefully, it's, it's hopefully we won't be there. So the, the, hopefully, in fifteen more years we don't need to act. Right. Yeah. You know. Hopefully. Well, the the the, the organization's growing. Ver is growing, and there's two main ways that if if anybody's watching this, how how can I help? Uh, how can I help Freddie? <laughs> right. And and how can I help Ver help help more people? There are two main ways, right? Well, first of all, of course, donation of money. Ver always yep. always needs money, correct? And you guys have always taken, and I think today you you can take donations via the website. Yes. What you're really looking for are monthly contributions, Exactly, right? yeah. Because the one way that we raise funds, it's uh, throughout the hurricane, right? Mm-hmm. And also doing like uh, dinner, or we do like cars for a good cause, that we have the exotic cars. But that's, that's hard, because you need to put now events and raise funds, and we... We want to take VR to the next level. Mm-hmm. Taking us to the next level will be bringing staff over. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we now have the first guy working with us. He has a huge experience. Kleber, he used to be part of Global System Foundation for over twenty-one as a VP. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, we sat down. We've been talking for a while. I know him for many years. We've done things together in Haiti, mm-hmm. and then we brought him over. But we uh, sat down with Gustavo and I said, "Hey." His paycheck, we don't have. Right. Would you pay half? I'll pay half from my pocket. And he said, done. So we we got an agreement for one year, okay? And it was right after he came in, 
hurricane strike. And, yeah. you know, we did what we did because we had him on board. Wow, yeah. We built in the village in Brazil. We only built in the village in Brazil because he's there. Right. Right? So once you start, we start to have the right pieces inside of the organization, you'll be able to do a lot more. Right. But we want to be very transparent with our donors. So we have people like, big shout out, I don't know if you guys going to cut, but sure. hopefully not. <laughs> Shout out to Lee and Alliance. You guys donated four houses. Of course. Four houses that we are building. We were so came, happy to do it. Came from you guys, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I really appreciate that. So, but how do I deliver that house? I, I'm not going to be able to go to Brazil and f and be there doing the, you know, seeing the construction get done. Right. So what we're looking now is to be transparent with the donor saying, listen, we're going to have overhead from now on. Mm -hmm. We ran without overhead. Our tax report is open. Anyone can call us and it's going to be there for you to see it. Sure. You know, we now need a secretary and we need a really small office. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a, a little bit of overhead now. Because yeah, a little bit of overhead. you are trying to grow. You're, you're, you're trying to help help more people. If, if Let's say we come end of the year. Our goal is to raise $10,000 on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's say 7,000 is going to overhead. Mm -hmm. Now also, Kleber needs to go to Brazil. How are we, we paying the airplane ticket? Right. So now I need to raise funds to pay the ticket. Well, I need to call Sam. Can you help me with ticket? It's not a good position to be, right? Right. But now with the 10,000 coming in, how much can we do with that staff? Right. If I have a secretary, like I leave an event and I have 100 business cards, who's calling those people that wants to be part of uh, VR, yeah. right? Yeah. It's following staff, up. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, Just I'll, like your business. Right? I'll take you for example. Yeah. You told me my wife uh, did her master's in Chagas disease. Yep. The area that we were working, did I follow up on you on that? No. You did not? Yeah. <laughs> and I had a, every intention of, of, of wanting to connect you guys, and then we See? both kind of you know fell apart. If, you, if you've got somebody, staff, that's following up on these opportunities... It's, it's more likely to happen. Yep. But the, the houses you guys donated, I think Lee got my email three months later. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, we close. we we always in touch throughout the conventions and business. Sure. But if it's someone else, it gets cold. I don't get the houses. So right. that's why we need the staff and we need the monthly. Like I the said. The monthly donations help because it kind of gives you guys room for that, for that overhead. Obviously, when you do these fundraising events, you're able to get you know, the push, funds yes. one time and then the next day it's dry again, right? Yeah. So if you can build up these, these these monthly donations, then you're able to, uh, you know, make things like staffing, uh, you know, Perfect. additions. And things a like anything that. counts, you know, yeah. like we got people now donating 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. We got people donating $500, you know, $1,000. Right. You know, right. we, we, we had a 1500 I'll give you the number. Right now we just started about two months ago mm -hmm. and we had 1500 in monthly. And our goal is get by December with 10,000. Awesome. Yep. Well, so people can reach out, uh, V-E-R, V-E Relief. Relief. Right? Uh, dot org. Dot org. Yep. And that's where they can go. You can donate. Um, and hopefully, I think by the time that, that everyone sees this podcast, there'll actually be an option there where you can set up those monthly donations. Yes, for which sure. Which be so huge. For sure uh, will. Uh, to V-E-R. Yeah. Well, you heard Alex saying, right? <laughs> Alex, you promise. Uh, that's very true. Yeah, Alex, you're, you're you're on the you're on the hook now. <laughs> you're on the hook now. So besides donations, people can also donate their, their time, their time, and they can do that also yep. at, at verelief.org. We're going to put the the, the, the yep. address here on the screen. Uh, that's one thing people ask. How can I help? Mm -hmm. Say, listen, if you follow our Instagram and you share our post, at one hundred percent of our donation and our operation on anything we do, it's on social media through two platforms. Mm -hmm. One is WhatsApp that we create the groups mm -hmm. and the other one is Instagram because I'm there doing lives and showing people. Mm -hmm. The minute that I stop doing the video, the operation dies. When we want to turn on the, the operation, we turn on the Instagram. So anyone from anywhere in the world, you can be a volunteer. Absolutely. Follow us on our Instagram. Right? You yeah. can also put that, the, the yeah, address. Yeah, absolutely. We, yeah. we can put those on there as well. Yeah, perfect. And once you see anything there, sometimes we do posts like you can donate here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we also take physical stuff, like Fort Myers, for example. 
We had people donating uh, AC, like uh, AC unit, microwaves, and we gave them, we had a warehouse down there. So we gave them the address, ship down here, we wow. deliver it. So, so many ways. There's, th- there's a lot of ways for people to help. Yes. You can donate money. If you don't have the money to donate, you can donate your time. If you're not close enough and you can't donate your time, you can follow on Instagram and you can share these things out and help VER raise yep. money. If every time you see a VR post on Instagram, if you do like and you share, you helping us, you you you, you have no idea because the algorithm. Right, 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 absolutely. Instagram yeah. sees that there is interaction here, so I tell people just like it. I mean, we see so much. I mean, it's it, it, it's so, it's how VR started, right? It was for that viral 100%. video, that viral video. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's amazing how uh, bad stuff go viral, and you know we yeah, we're trying to make good stuff go ma- viral. Make our video go viral. <laughs> Fred, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, VR is truly a tremendous organization. Uh, Alliance Group is, is is proud to do our part to help you uh, help more people. Um, and hopefully this this podcast will, will help in those efforts as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks awesome. so much, man. Thank you. Listen to this interview and more on the Alliance Group podcast.